I had to pause working on this for a bit. I got hit uh, with COVID, really annoying, but uh, all better, luckily. So, in the meantime, I tested a few things. The CRT wasn't displaying anything. Uh, the potentiometers on the front, if I moved them, they did uh, show some flicker. Um, but those are fine, they measure all right, uh, so that's not uh, the issue. And then I thought, wait a minute, on the back of on here, there is a video output port. So I hooked that up to my oscilloscope and I had a look and it seems it's just outputting a bell signal. There was nothing on there, just the sync and yeah, that's it, no video data. So yeah, the CRT not displaying anything is most likely because there is nothing to display. So let's hook that up. I'll show you the uh, ball signal and I'll show you what else I've uh, been trying out. Uh, the video connector is over here. Uh, the outer two are ground and the middle is the actual signal. So uh, let's see what we get. And yeah, I'll uh, show a picture of that on, uh, on the screen. But that uh, very much looks like um, ball. Now it's a 15.7 kilohertz signal, so yeah, that matches uh, with PAL. And if I zoom out a bit, two segments there is about 20 milliseconds, so yeah, 50 hertz, 15.7 kilohertz, that's um, a PAL signal. Of course, with no actual data on there, it uh, makes sense that there's not, uh, not much visible on the scope, uh, on the CRT. It means that uh, something on here on the CPU uh, is uh, not not booting most likely so yeah interesting now I continued probing on the CPU board a bit I'll uh, I tried to probe the clock signal and there's definitely a clock signal available I then looked at the uh, reset pin which is low meaning it's not in reset so that all looked um, fine but then I looked at the ready pin which indicates that memory is ready and it's uh, not waiting for memory and it was waiting indefinitely for something to happen on uh, on memory so let me just uh, quickly try and probe that so I moved it around a bit I put the RAM cards behind it so I can easily probe the CPU first things first let's check uh, the clock signal because if there's no clock then yeah the CPU is not going to do much and yeah that's perfectly fine a four point one megahertz clock so that's good now the reset pin uh, I tested before it's low meaning the CPU is not in reset so again that's good <laughs> now then the ready pin which is also low meaning this thing is waiting for memory forever so that makes sense it's not booting and the ball pin is high meaning yeah it's waiting for something so yeah, makes sense that it's not doing much. Now, the issue is that what is it waiting for? Um, there's memory on there. I uh, checked that memory, the EEPROM on there, it's fine. I uh, copied that as well, so I got that as a binary, so I can make a new EEPROM if needed. And the RAM card seems fine. So, then I thought, wait a minute, there was a real-time clock on this computer. And our batteries on the back, which uh, power the real-time clock, so it remembers time and a few other settings. Uh, looking online, those other settings involve things like what kind of hard drive is being used. So it makes a perfect sense that uh, this computer is trying to read that very early in the boot stage. And the real-time clock is um, is there on a the different board. This is on the um, ROM board, the programming board for the PLCs. So if it's trying to read that chip and I, it's not connected, um, yeah, that makes a lot of sense that it's not doing much. So let's plug that in and see what we get on the video signal like that. I hooked up the ROM card as well. I did check. Uh, was board very quickly. There's no shorts on the power supply or anything like that. The diodes on the top here look a little crusty, but they measure fine, so it should be all right. Let's turn it on and see what it does. And there we go. And there we go. 
there's definitely something being displayed on there. Now you still have the PAL uh, sync uh, signals here, but there's definitely some data on top. It looks like it's trying to display something. Let's try and hook up a display to that connector and uh, see what we get. My monitor of my computer, at least one of them, has a composite in, so that should work and show us um, something. Uh, I could hook up the CRT again, but I, at this point it is easier to hook it up to a composite display uh, just to validate that it is working. A little janky, but that's the only cable I had, so let's hook that up and see uh, uh, what we get. Perfect. Um, yeah. Yep, we actually have something on screen. Let me quickly uh, grab the camera and uh, show you. So yeah, um, I could plug in the disk controller, but currently my lab power supply is already at its limits. So let's put this to the side for now and look at the lab, uh, look at the power supply that is uh, included or belongs to this computer. I did check it a little bit further and yeah, uh, it does definitely need some form of lows or anything because uh, just on my desk, even with the sense wires uh, connected, it doesn't power on. I did quickly test it in this machine without anything, any cars installed and then it seems to do something. Um, let me show you. I'll quickly plug it in and yeah, 5.2 volts. And if I unplug it, it of course uh, dies down, so that seems fine. The 12 volts on the other hand, if I plug that in, it goes up to something, but definitely not at 12 volts. So that power supply is a little unhappy. Uh, even if I leave it in for a while, it doesn't go to 12 volts, and it starts to smell like something is getting really warm. I did also have the board on the side, and I checked all the other power uh, rails on that. And the 5 volt one is the only one that actually works. The 12 volt doesn't work, the minus 12 and the 24 volt rail uh, act very much the same as the 12 volt rail, which does make sense. Let me show you. Here is the 5 volt rail. Those are all the 5 volt connections, and those all work. Now, the 12 volt rail is supplied down there and the uh, minus 12 and the 24 rail are supplied from here. Now these are all powered by this transformer and the 5 volt one is powered by this transformer. So if one of the rails here is broken then this entire transformer will probably collapse or not work uh, or if the um, controller of this transformer is broken that would mean this entire section is not working. Hopefully the controller is fine, uh, the transformer is fine, and it is just one of the parts on here that, uh, that died. Now in here are a couple of small black uh, tantalum caps, and a friend of mine who I uh, discussed this power supply with did say that those can sometimes just short. And I've seen that before with tantalum caps, so Makes sense to um, quickly measure the output here of the rails and see if there is a short um, somewhere on there. So the um, well, 5 volts on that side should, uh, yeah, there's resistance, 12 volts, mega ohm, that's perfectly fine. The minus 12, that would be this rail here, yeah, kilo ohms, 11 kilo ohms seems to bit low but that's definitely not a short than the plus 30 volts a few kilo ohms are going up that's probably capacitor that seems perfectly reasonable and the 24 volts oh um that's um that's a that short this should be the 24 volt rail and it's um zero ohms so yeah that's um, very broken. Let's um, have a little look at that. Looking at this again after a few weeks, I do notice that there's a few diodes in there and one looks um, a little off. Those two there look fine. This one looks all right. And if this is the same diode, 
it turned completely blank. Yeah, and the circuit boards with some light on the background, you can see it looks a little like it's gotten a bit warm. So that seems weird. There's a few tantalum caps uh, to one microfarad there, another one microfarad, and I think a 3.3 microfarad over there. I'm going to quickly measure the tantalum caps and, and those diodes and see what's uh, going on. Oh, this does look a little brown. That could be flux, but as the diodes also looks like it got a bit warm, that might be a bit um, broken. Oh, two ohms. Two ohms. And I think we got two diodes over there. Yeah, half a volt drop. So these two are definitely dead diodes. The caps there. Oh. Oh, that's one dead capacitor. That one seems fine going up. So the screw is there, so we have the capacitor there. Ooh. That's one dead capacitor, and that's another dead capacitor over there. Let's um, desolder those, and de desolder the diodes, and um, put in a few new ones. I'm going to just remove all the four uh, tantalum capacitors, uh, the ones that are still alive. I mean, when I'm busy, let's uh, just get them all out before anything else dies there. are all gone and yeah that diode definitely looks um ooh, a little crusty but just because i'm uh, curious let's see uh, how many of these are actually uh, completely toast that one's fine that one's dead that's the um, one microfarad one yeah that one's fine and the last one, that's also fine. So one of those caps is uh, definitely uh, broken and the diodes are, um, yeah, two ohms. And that one actually is working fine, I think. Yeah. So just the um, white one that turned into a Two ohm resistor, it seems. Oh, yeah, that'll do it. All right, let's um, clean that up, put some replacement parts in, and see if that indeed fixes the issue. Are we good? Whole computer broken by a single capacitor. Well, that wouldn't be the first time. Let's um, quickly power that on for a brief moment, see if any uh, smoke escapes or not. And yeah, don't hear anything uh, trying to explode. And it looks like nothing has tried to um, explode yet. So that's a good start. I'll quickly check with a millimeter if anything is uh, off. Now the uh, 12 volts. Yeah, still um, acting the same. I'm guessing it really does need a load or a signal to turn on. So that makes sense. The 24 volts, which is now um, actually not a short circuit anymore. Um, yeah, it gets a voltage and it uh, drops down. So seems reasonable. Let's plug it in the um, motherboards and um, hope nothing goes wrong. Let me um, get the 5 volts uh, connected to my millimeter, and let's hope 5 volts working. That definitely seems alright. Now of course the uh, big question is, what's the 12 volts doing? There's not really any load on the 12 volts, so who knows. Oh, look at that. That's much, much better. So, that seems somewhat fixed. 
Let's get this on the side and measure the other uh, folders reels because I only have the uh, 5 volt and 12 volt easily accessible. Minus 16. Yeah, that was the minus 12, which is minus 17. All right, sure. I can uh, survive on that. And then, of course, the very important 24 volt reel. Yeah, that's 24 volts. Well, 22. That's close enough. And yeah, it's connected the wrong way. 30, minus 30. 30 seems close enough. And then I think I got 18 volts left. No, it could be that that is actually not connected on this uh, board. So I'll be fine with that. We got most voltage reels back in working again. So I think it's time to plug some cards in and see if we get anything on screen. That'd be cool. All right, um, we got all four cards plugged in, power supply plugged in. So it's starting to look like a computer again. So let's turn this on, see if I get anything on screen, see if I get any smoke. I hope just things on screen, honestly. And yeah, I got something on screen. It's um, the same as before, so that's a very good sign. It wants a disc, and it doesn't have a disc yet. Let's uh, hook up a, uh, the floppy uh, drive. Uh, I was a little too curious, um, because the friend who I got this from did start it up. Uh, with drive soon everything in it and it did start and it did do a self-test So I'm very curious if it'll boot from hard drive or not So let's power it on and uh, see what happens Well, I get the uh, disk uh, thing on screen. Ooh, it's definitely trying to boot. Let me just um, get my get my camera and show you what I got on screen. As you can see, it uh, starts to boot. Personal CPN version 2.1. That's perfect. 512k bytes of um, memory. Looks great. Now I just ask for a test disk. So um, that's I think the next step. Well, first, let's look at the CRT because I'm really curious if it will just work on CRT. That would be awesome. I got it quickly assembled, like really quickly. Everything is still loose in there because um, it has to go all apart again to clean it because it definitely needs a lot of cleaning and de-rusting. So let's quickly turn it on because I'm really curious to see if the CRT is still working or not. Oh yes, look at that. Controls work. Yep, perfect. That's um, amazing. I'm really curious to see if I can hook up a keyboard and uh, it'll do anything. That would be amazing. Um, uh, oh, look at that. Oh, what? Oh, yep. Yeah. Definitely it's doing something. Let me zoom in on that. Yep, yeah, um, can't find um, any data. Ooh, okay. Um, no, can't can't spark that disk. Mm, would be nice if I could at least run a park command. Well, we got a display. We have been able to do a few things. Uh, let me quickly reboot that and see if I can park the disk because I don't like disks that are not parked. I do really like that it's trying to actually boot from hard drive so it can definitely run from hard drive and the hard drive is actually working which is really great uh, but it can't continue unless I got a test disk so this needs a 720k 5 and a quarter inch disk to boot from uh, the binary for that is available online including tools and instructions on how to make one but I don't have a 1.2 megabyte drive so I'm going to ask around and I think I've got a friend who has a drive like that so can I park nope I think that's all for now I'm going to get that test disk uh, made and for another video in which we will have a look at what's on the actual drive because there's probably some Siemens test tools on there and 
Mm, I've seen some people online who have found chess and other games on there. That would be really cool. Um, and of course, clean it. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please like, subscribe, you know the whole uh, YouTube thing. And I'll see you next time in hopefully part 2 of 2 in which we can finish fixing, restoring and uh, looking at this uh, quite pretty Siemens luggable computer. <laughs>